So last week we reported that the Vatican released the results of the unprecedented two-year global survey of Catholics, also happened here in Vermont. Um, and among the results they found, their members want the church to take concrete steps to promote women to decision-making roles. What do you envision that might look like? I think it might look like what we've done here in the Diocese of Burlington, um, that in the cabinet positions over in the diocese, uh, two-thirds of the, pe the people who have administrative and executive positions are women. They were hired and chosen not because they were women, but because they were the best qualified person. They applied for it, and we. Uh, it's, but then at the end, at the end, the end result was that now when I sit around the cabinet table and I have the, my HR person and the director of Catholic Charities and the director of Development and Communications and the director of of, uh, of all the different agencies who have a responsibility for a number of employees and a number of people and a number of different things, uh, those are women and I value their opinion and they are quick to give it to me and uh, and also they are quite capable of, of doing things so I think I would envision that when people you uh, inviting women and men to to come and work but when and seeing them as equal and giving them the authority that they need that's necessary to do what they need to do I think Pope Francis's desire to have women involved in the Synod on a concrete level is wonderful because the first time women are actually going to be at the Synod with all the bishops in Rome and not only have a voice but also have a vote and that's a first, and that's and we just need to keep moving that way. Do we go as far as having women priests? Do you think we we can't in terms of our theology? It's you know Pope John Paul said it's a settled question, so that's kind of a, a difficult place to go. But there are places in which women could possibly be brought into the church in a, in a kind of a ministerial position that involves uh, more than just being administrative. Perhaps women deacons someday. Um, those, that's been kicked around and it's more, I think it's coming to a, perhaps a positive place. There are many people who are threatened by that thought, but uh, I'm not. Um, I think it's, I think it's, they, were, they were part of our history in the, in the past and there's no reason why it couldn't be part of our history now. Uh, another finding was Catholics wanted the church to include the LGBTQ plus community more as well. Where do you feel the church could do more in this regard? Well, I certainly am going to try. Um, I'm going to try and be more welcoming. Um, and, and not just say, oh, of course our doors are open, you come, but actually going out and, and, and inviting and encouraging and, and making s concrete uh, efforts to try and speak with the LGBTQ community and also the, the transgender um, community and all that. And we're, you know, for example, in the conference, we're talking about uh, how Catholic hospitals will treat trans, tra people with transgender dysphoria. But I think when you talk about that, you have to talk to them. So if you're going to have policies about how we deal, how we medically treat people or how we can counsel them on what we do with them, you've got to talk to the people who are in that community. You can't talk out of a vacuum. And I think the first most important thing is to, is to follow the Senate path, which is to listen, to actually listen respectfully and maybe be challenged and kind of walk, work it around and say, There's, is there truth to what they're saying to us? And is there something that we can do concretely that we're not doing now that can do differently? I think we have to be open to change, especially when you're dealing with things like the LGBT community who, who just want to be treated like everybody else, I hope. And um, among the other findings, they want more accountability for bishops. As a bishop, do you feel that this is needed? Um, universally, yeah. In terms of the universal church, yeah, I do. I still think uh, there are a number of places around the world that are still uh, not following on the protocols that we have in the United States now when it comes to uh, dealing with abuses, abusers, whether they be priests or, or, or bishops. And I think, yeah, we should be held accountable when, when, first of all, when we are abusers ourselves, and second of all, when we cover it up. And um, the diocese surveyed Catholics here. What were some of the things that specifically Vermont Catholics said they wanted to see? The, um, the Vermont Catholics pretty much mirrored what the rest of the United States said um, along the lines of including more inclusive. Uh, so is there a way in which we can include uh, more women in places of power. They also were very concerned about the fact that young people are not part of the church and that families are leaving. And they said that we have to do more and more to be, figure out how we're going to encourage these people to be, these people to be part of who we are and invite them welcoming and all that. So I think if you look at the national survey and the national study, Vermonters pretty much follow the same thing. So will making those changes bring more people back to the church? I asked the bishop about that too. You can hear our full conversation this Sunday at 1130 on You Can Quote Me.